This is Sean Green. Thanks for tuning into the Online Zone on Card Player TV. This is the weekly online player interview. This week's interview is with Sorel Imperium Mitzi, the current Online Player of the Year leaderboard leader. Canadian-born Mitzi has had an amazing run so far this year. He's made 39 Online Player of the Year qualified caches in 2007 and has raked in more than $502,000 in winnings from those finishes alone. Those finishes include wins in both the Full Tilt Online Poker Series 3 and 4 and a win in the Poker Stars Sunday Warm-Up. His extremely aggressive play and by the instincts rather than by the math strategies have cemented him on the top of most reputable leaderboards out there. We have Sorel on the phone right now to tell us how he does it. How you doing, Sorel? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, so first off, did you know that you have an unofficial poker blog at SorelMeetsy.net? It only purpose pretty much seems to be to list eBay auctions. When did you get into blogging about eBay? Uh, yeah, um, that's. Uh, I discovered that site when I was doing my ritualistic uh, search myself in Google on Friday night to see what people are saying about me. And um, <laughs> I was kind of surprised to see it, but, you know, that's what people do. Uh, do they'll do anything to make money these days, and it's actually a pretty, a pretty good idea. Well, um, you've been doing really well in the Online Player of the Year race, of course, um, but you've also been doing really well in the new $10,000 buy-in high-stakes showdown heads-up <laughs> tournament on PokerStars. You've taken it down two of the five times it's been held. What are your thoughts on that tournament? Oh, I love that tournament. That's the tournament I look forward to every week. Uh, I've actually played it four times. The first one I missed because, as you know, the registration filled up really quickly, yeah. so I wasn't able to get a spot. But um, <clears throat> I played it four times, and it's funny. The, uh, <laughs> there seems to be a pattern. I, uh, every, every single time I've lost it, I've been facing ads, ADZ, mm -hmm. uh, the first round, or as you guys say, Z. <laughs> I've been facing him uh, the first round, and I've, I've lost versus him the first round. And every time I face him, I have him like at a 2-1 to one, uh, chip lead, and he just he runs really good. I mean, he plays great, but, um, you know, to have someone at a 2-1 to one chip lead both times, and then, uh, you know, I just lost a few 60-40s here and there, and uh, before you knew it, I was out. So, And the, the other two times that I won it, I was actually heads up with a perfect gent. So yes. it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the kind of track record that you have for online tournaments, uh, your skill at poker tournaments is pretty much undeniable at this point. What would you consider the foundation of your playing style? Like, what makes you so good? I don't know. I mean, I, I just noticed this after, uh, after Vegas, actually, because during Vegas, I, I got a chance to see how a lot of top players played by just, like, looking at their screens and watching them play. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that I have, like, a very unconventional style. And I've always kind of just, like, I'm sure you're familiar with the quote, like, uh, see what the masses are doing and then do the opposite. I probably, like, totally butchered that, but I'm pretty sure it goes something like that. That's, that's pretty much how, how my playing style is. I just have a very unique perspective on the game. And, you know, I, I, you have to be willing to make, like, really bold plays. And you can't, be, you can't care about what people think because... Sometimes you're going to be wrong, but if you're a good enough player and if your instincts are like really sharp, then most of the time you're going to be right. What's an example of one of those bold plays that you're talking about? Like, what, what kind of thing would you do that normal people wouldn't do? Do you think? I don't know. Well, I do a lot of things that you know people kind of raise an eyebrow to, like re-raising early position raises with nothing, and um, basically just playing the player. Like, I don't know. I feel that. I feel that most players generally have good reads, but they just don't go with them as often as I do. Like, it's important to be to be confident in your reads and just if you think someone's playing back at you, then you should you should play accordingly to that. And I think the difference between good players and really great players is that good players have the reads, but they're not willing to go with it from the fear of like looking stupid or uh, or like putting their entire tournament on the line, and if they're wrong, then they lose the tournament, obviously. But really good players understand that, you know, they've been playing the game for a long time, and, you know, their reads are usually are usually right. So it's just a matter of <clears throat> whether or not you, uh, you're confident enough to go with those reads. Right. Well, what, what do you think you still have to learn, then? Is there anything that you can think of? Um... Yeah, well, I mean, live poker is something I'm just getting into, so 
I think I have a lot to learn in live poker. Online, there's a few things that I can do differently, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the way I play online. But live poker is a different story because there's just so many other variables, and it gets really, really interesting and really, really deep thinking when you're playing live, much more so than online. Is it, is it to do with body language, like both your own and the opponent's? Like, do you just have to kind of start acclimating yourself to looking for those or controlling your own? Well, the thing is, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who use reverse tells as well. Mm -hmm. So the only way you can rely on those reads is if you sort of just classify people into different categories and um, you have to decide which people are using reverse tells, which people are act, who are like actors, and which people, uh, which people you think are pretty straightforward. And that just comes with experience, and that's experience that I don't have. So, you know, there's, there's times that I make bad calls live, and there's times that I make really good ones, but they're, like, the ratio is definitely not as good as it is online right now for me. And my goal right now is to basically bring my online game to my live game and then see how that goes. And there was, there's this rumor out there that uh, Brian Townsend and Barry Greenstein have a prop bet on who is better online players or live players. And you happen to be one of Townsend's horses in that bet. He's banking on you to do well in the World Poker Tour events, basically. Have you heard about this? Yeah, I heard about it. Uh, Brian actually called me before he made the bet, <laughs> and he told me about it. Um, I'm actually very flattered. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Brian, and um, for him to choose me as one of those people is, like, a huge deal. So I'm really happy about that, and I, I, I'm going to do my best. And, you know, I've always, always, always played really well under pressure, and, like, just having that in the back of my head that, like, Brian is counting on me is, like, going to drive me to do so much better. Like, it was the same thing that happened in the World Series. I was short stack pretty much all of day one, and, you know, there were several spots where I could have just said, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to go all in. But a lot of people were counting on me to do really well, and I had a few last longer bets, and, you know, people had me on their fantasy team and everything. So just that in the back of my head makes me just perform so much better. Mm hmm and is it is it just a lot of pressure for you then, or you don't you, you don't worry about the added pressure then? I mean, how much how much is the bet for? I didn't hear. Uh, I think they're doing like a ten percent thing, where like, say I make a million in caches this year, uh -huh. and Barry Greenstein makes uh, like two hundred thousand. Uh -huh. um, Brian Townsend gets ten percent of eight hundred thousand, which is eighty thousand. So, gotcha. so that's how they're doing it, as far as I know. Which players do you respect most online right now, and why? Uh, probably, I don't know, there's like a lot of players. I mean, the list is huge, obviously, but a few names that come off the top of my head right now is like Annette, 15, and uh, Chad Batista, Little Hold'em, he's a great player. Um, below Above, there's just so many players. Uh, Westman Low is awesome. Intervention is is like pretty much my mini me <laughs> and I'm trying to uh sharpen his skills and um make him a better player than he already is. He's already an amazing player mm -hmm. and I th he's actually the guy that I'm I'm mentoring right now and I think he's going to do very well. Cool. Well, you you actually you mentioned Annette at 15 as well. Um and we're actually doing a an interview with her tomorrow. Um did you see that the Poker X Factor the tournament that she played blind? I saw a bit of it, actually. I, I saw probably about 20% um, of hands in the early mid-stages, and then I saw all the hands on the final table. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm kind of, in a way, I'm kind of upset <laughs> that she did that because it just shows people that there's so much more to poker than cards, and yeah. a lot of people don't realize that. And people, you know, are constantly doing everything they can to make bad players better, and that kind of uh, affects me in a way. But, you know... I, I'm really proud of her that she did that, and that's a tremendous accomplishment, I think. You also mentioned Chad Batista. We just did an interview with him, uh, actually, last week, and he kind of got a lot of flack on s some of the forums about the interview, especially concerning the fact that he says he doesn't use any of the poker odds or he doesn't know any of the poker odds. And I know that you don't really, you profess to not really use any mathematics in your game as well. So what do you, what do you have to say about the people that were kind of bad-mouthing Chad Batista? I don't know. Chad is a very misunderstood guy. Um, he's had a very rough past, and 
you know, people can't seem to see through that. I mean, I've I've been talking to Chad since both of us were really well known in the online community, and he's just a really warm-hearted, great guy. Like the more the more you meet him and the more you talk to him, the more you realize that. And you know, it's it's just like with anything in life. There's so many people who are just haters, and they they really have like I don't know. It's just it's pretty sad, actually, that what people are saying about him. And, you know, I've I've talked to Chad so many times, and we we met a lot. Uh, we met a couple times in Vegas, and when it comes down to it, he's just a very, very nice, genuine guy. And, you know, he's, he's a good friend of mine in the, in the poker community. On a side note, uh, what inspired your screen name, Zangbazan24 and Imperium? Uh, Zangbazan24... Zangbazan actually means call me in Farsi. Uh, so I, I've had a lot of Persian friends growing up, and I just thought Zangbazan was one of those words that just, like, flows off the tongue really well. And it meant call me, which is, you know, it means call me on the telephone, but, you know, you can kind of relate that to poker because, you know, fold, call, mm -hmm. call me, you know. So I, I thought that was kind of funny. I created that nickname like two and a half years ago. I actually wanted to change it back to Imperium, but PokerStars wouldn't let me. So, because I wanted like uniformity on all sites, but uh, they didn't let me. So I, I had to stay with that. But I'm actually happy now because I really like that screen name. In fact, I wish I chose Zangbazan on all <laughs> on all sites. <laughs> well, where but, did Imperium um, come from then? Imperium that means empire in uh, in Latin, and uh, that's just the name that. My mentor at the time, Josh, JJ Prodigy, and I were coming up with, uh, after I won a tournament, and I was showing him hand histories throughout the entire tournament, and he was just, like, blown away, and he said that I have so much potential, and, you know, that motivation and what he said to me really, really, you know, made me a student of the game, and it made me, like, so inspired to do well and become ranked on pocket fives. Like, I set a bunch of goals for myself, and... Just gradually, I started. Uh, I started completing each goal, and it was, it was actually a really cool process. And um, so, yeah, we we stayed up one night, and we had like a whole bunch of names that we went through, and in the end, we both decided on Imperium. So that's pretty much how that went. Cool, cool. Well, kind of on a related note, how did you get started playing poker in the first place? Uh, I've started like okay. Well, the first time I ever played. Well, okay, I should start with by this. Uh, the first time I've ever played poker was probably when I was, like, six. But I was playing, like, five-card stud and just for fun, and we'd have, like, a poker machine, and I'd gamble, like, $5, which was, like, half of my weekly allowance with my mom and my brothers. And, you know, I come from a really, really gambly kind of family. So uh, we also we always used to, like, bet on Scrabble and, and um, just – random poker games and wheel of fortune everything but anyway uh we uh we played we played a little uh on the machine and we played a little bit um with cards and everything and that's pretty much how i started understanding like you know that a pair or that two pair beats a pair and flush beats a straight and then um i was actually introduced to texas hold'em by a friend of mine in high school and we, we played at his friend's one of his friend's house and uh you know, at first I was like, what is this, blinds? And <laughs> it just didn't make any sense to me. Like, what are, what's a small blind and what's a big blind? And why do we only have two cards? And at first I really hated the game, but, I mean, within hours I was just loving it. And, you know, I, I kind of picked it up right away. And then, I mean, on my 18th birthday I made my first deposit on Party Poker. And uh, this was actually just after finishing a course in the army and I pretty much used all the money that I made from the army which was like seven or eight thousand for the summer I pretty much lost all of that within like a week and a half so that was very depressing for me especially <laughs> because that was like the hardest work I've ever done in my life <laughs> so to lose that all in two weeks was pretty devastating and then um, I mean I just kept playing and even though I, I lost, you know, I, I stuck to it, and uh, I just looked at it as an investment that would pay dividends. And 
obviously it has, so no regrets here. <laughs> Well, and you said that you came from a gambling family, so it was all, it was probably a lot easier for your family to get used to the idea of you becoming a professional gambler then? Surprisingly not, actually. <laughs> My parents at first were actually really, really opposed to it. Mm. Um, even though I came from a, come from a gambling family, like they didn't want me to make the same mistakes that they did, and uh, you know they were they were very opposed to it at first. But how did they feel now? <laughs> <laughs> now they love it. <laughs> you know, I take them for lobster every couple of weeks, so they love it. Well, thanks a lot for giving us a call. That's all I have uh, for you today. Um, and I appreciate you getting on the phone with us. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day, man. You too. All right. Thank you, Sorrell. And thank you for watching The Online Zone on Card Player TV. And keep your eyes out for our interview with Annette15 coming up later this week.